When I was 23, I waved goodbye to family, friends and country and set off on this amazing adventure. The first days at Gombe were very unreal. I can still remember the smell of it. I can still remember climbing up the first hillside and sitting there and hearing baboons bark and just, you know, how can this be me? My mother had come because the authorities wouldn't allow me, you know, to be on my own and she volunteered. She was the one who boosted my morale and said, Jane, you're actually learning more than you think and you're seeing how the chimps go around in small groups, sometimes meet up, what they were eating. I was learning how they made nests at night, bending over the branches. And it was sad that my mother left just before the breakthrough observation, that exciting day when I saw the one chimp who'd begun to lose his fear, David Greybeard, using grass stems as tools to fish for termites, picking leafy twigs and stripping off the leaves. And he was using and making tools. And at that time, it was thought that only humans used and made tools. We were man the toolmaker. My favorite memory of David is in the early days, he'd just begun to let me follow him. And on this occasion, I thought I'd lost him. I found him sitting looking back, and it looked as though he was waiting for me. And I sat near him and offered him a palm nut that was lying on the ground, and he turned his face away. So I put my hand closer. He turned, he looked directly into my eyes. He reached out. He took the nut, he dropped it, he, he didn't want it. But then he very gently squeezed my fingers, which is how chimpanzees reassure each other. And so it was perfect communication between him and me, using a, a way of communicating that predates human language. It was the first time that a chimpanzee reached out to make contact with me. And when you put this all together, then you realize there isn't a sharp line dividing us and the rest of the animal kingdom. And we're part of it. And we are not the only beings with personalities, minds capable of thinking, and above all, emotions. For me, the exciting part was communication patterns of kissing, embracing, holding hands, patting, shaking the fists, swaggering, throwing rocks, because they use objects as weapons as well as tools learning other tool-using behaviours, realising that these are passed from one generation to the next through observation and imitation, which is a definition of culture. Learning that they share emotions like happiness, sadness, fear, grief, and all the time learning about their different personalities, as different from each other as we are. I was very shocked when I realized that chimpanzees like us have a dark side to their nature. I thought they were like us, but nicer. The males regularly patrol the boundaries of a territory. They're very territorial, and if they catch sight of a stranger, then they will give chase, and typically the victim will die of the wounds inflicted. But chimpanzees also show characteristics of love, compassion and altruism. So we share these characteristics too. The major threats facing chimpanzees is human population growth, it's destruction of habitat, it's the bushmeat trade, that is the commercial hunting of wild animals for food. Since 1986, when I realized that chimpanzee numbers were decreasing, I had to try and do something for the chimpanzees and the forest that I love. So I arrived as a scientist and I left as an activist. Just like that. I don't, I, I don't remember consciously choosing. Good afternoon, everyone. It's me, Jane. You hear this saying, we haven't inherited this planet from our parents, we borrowed it from our children. We've been stealing from our children. We're still stealing their future. Denying climate change is stealing the future of, of our children just to make money now. It was because 
I met so many young people who seemed to have so little hope for the future that I began Roots and Shoots. Roots and Shoots is a symbolic name, and I always ask people, think of your favorite tree. And when it began to grow, it was a little seed, but there's a magic, it's a life force in that little seed, so powerful that those little roots to reach the water can work through rocks and eventually push them aside. That little shoot to reach the sunlight can work through cracks in a brick wall and eventually knock it down. So we see the rocks and the walls as all the problems, environmental and social, that we've inflicted on the planet. And the main message is every single individual makes a difference every single day. And we have a choice. And it's hope hundreds and thousands of young people around the world can break through and can make this a better world for all living things. Bye. Thank you.